children, I am glad to welcome you to another virtual class where English is made easy with teacher Cherika. Today, I will teach you how to write paragraphs that compare and contrast. I think you're ready. So let's get started. If you were to pick a pet between this dog and this cat, what would you choose? Before you decide, let's consider some points. Well, they're both adorable, fluffy, and white. On the other hand, dogs like to play a lot, while cats like to sleep. And when it comes to cleaning them, dogs need to be given a bath, while cats can lick themselves clean. So, have you picked your choice? What helped you in deciding which pet to choose? Yes, by looking into their differences and similarities, you were able to easily make a decision. Do you know that when we considered their similarities and differences, we did some comparing and contrasting? Yes, that is exactly what we do when we compare and contrast things. When you compare or make a comparison, you identify what is the same in the objects being compared. Looking back at the pictures of the dog and the cat, they are both adorable, fluffy, and white. Notice that I use the word both to show similarity. Other signal words used for comparison are like, alike, have in common, similar, similarly, to, and same. But when you contrast, you identify what is different. Going back to our examples, dogs like to play a lot, while cats like to sleep. And when it comes to cleaning them, dogs need to be given a bath while cats can lick themselves clean. The signal word used to show their differences is while. Other signal words used to contrast two or more things are bought However, while, on the other hand, although, contrary to, as opposed, and instead. To help you organize your comparison and contrast ideas, let's use a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is a graphic organizer that uses circles to show relationships among things. Circles that overlap shows commonality, while circles that do not overlap don't share those traits. A Venn diagram helps to visually represent similarities and differences of two things or concepts. And later on, when we start learning how to write paragraphs that show comparison and contrast, you will start appreciating what a Venn diagram can do. For now, let us use this in representing the similarities and differences of the dog and the cat. In the portion where two circles overlap is where we're going to write the similarities of the dog and the cat. On each side of the overlapping circles is where we're going to place their differences. Let me show you. The dog and the cat are both adorable, fluffy, and white. These traits go to the center because they are the similarities. Dogs like to play a lot goes to the side of the Venn diagram intended for the dog, while cats like to sleep goes to the side intended for the cat. Dogs need to be given a bath, of course, goes to the side of the dog, and cats can lick themselves clean, goes to the side of the cat. And that's how simple it is to use the Venn diagram. All you have to do is place the similarities in the overlapping circles and the differences on each side. Now, it's your turn to try using a Venn diagram. Read the paragraph about butterflies and bees. Compare and contrast by identifying their commonality or similarities and differences. Use the Venn diagram to present your answers. I'll give you four minutes to accomplish this activity.
Now let's check your work. The common traits that butterflies and bees have are they both live all over the world. They both have four wings and they feed on nectar and pollen of flowers. The differences are butterflies have colorful wings while bees' wings are transparent. Bees live in colonies while butterflies do not and they often travel by themselves. It's good that you now know how to identify similarities and differences and organize these ideas in a Venn diagram. You know what? This is very useful in writing paragraphs that show comparison and contrast. Let's now find out how this new learned skill of yours can be applied in writing such paragraph. Remember that comparison and contrast paragraphs are texts in which the similarities and differences of at least two subjects are presented and organized logically. So when you are planning to write a comparison and contrast paragraphs, you have to write about similarities and differences. You can't just do one, you have to do both. Otherwise, it can't be called a comparison and contrast paragraph. To write comparison and contrast paragraph, you should remember the following tips. First, choose at least two subjects you want to describe. They should be related in any way. Do not choose subjects that are completely unrelated to each other because you will have difficulty in finding their similarities. Second, identify the similarities and differences and organize them in a Venn diagram. This is where you're going to apply what you've learned a while ago. Third, make a topic sentence where you include the subjects you're going to talk about so that your readers will know what you're going to compare and contrast. Fourth, follow your topic sentence with supporting details grouped together. For example, after stating the topic sentence, you might want to start by stating their differences, and after that, the similarities follow. Or, you might want to say how they're the same with each other first, and then followed by their differences. Then, use the transition or signal words that show similarities such as like, alike, have in common, similar, similarly, to, and same. And for showing differences, use the signal words but, however, while, on the other hand, although, contrary to, as opposed, and instead. Finally, sum up everything with a concluding statement. It could be a recommendation or a conclusion. I have here an example of similarities and differences presented in a Venn diagram. As you can see, the topics are rice terraces and plain rice fields. For similarities, both are prepared paddy areas for planting rice and perhaps other crops. These two farmlands can be irrigated so that plants may have enough water to thrive. The differences are rice terraces are sloped plains that have been cut into steps. They are commonly used to farm on hilly or mountainous terrain. Plain rice fields or paddies are flat and wide surfaces of land usually farmed on valleys and plains. Rice terraces need more effort and time for farmers to transport farming tools and other equipment. Plain rice fields allow easier management of such materials. To write this in paragraph form, let's begin by stating the topic sentence. Rice terraces and plain rice fields are alike in few ways and different in many others. In this part, the readers are given the idea that the paragraph covers about the similarities and differences of rice terraces and plain rice fields. It is then followed by supporting details that talk about why they are alike in few ways. This is marked by a signal word, both. Both are prepared paddy areas for planting rice and perhaps other crops. 
The next sentence shows the similarity. These two farmlands can be irrigated so that plants may have enough water to thrive. The next paragraph deals with the differences between rice terraces and plain rice fields. It begins with a signal word, however, to show that the following statements are in contrast to the first paragraph. However, rice terraces are pieces of sloped plains that have been cut into steps. They are commonly used to farm on hilly or mountainous terrain. The next sentence shows how plain rice field is different from rice terraces. It begins with a transitional word. On the other hand, plain rice fields or paddies are flat and wide surfaces of land usually farmed on valleys and plains. It is then followed by a pair of differences using the signal word while. Rice terraces need more time and effort for farmers to transport farming tools and equipment, while plain rice fields allow easier management of such materials. Then, it is summed up by a concluding sentence. Though alike and different in some other ways, what matters most in both farms is the effective production of staple foods such as rice, corn, wheat, and other crops. Now, it is time for you to practice what you learned today by writing your own paragraphs. Remember that comparison and contrast paragraphs require for similarities and differences of at least two subjects. And in order to effectively make one, Remember the six tips that I gave a while ago. First, choose at least two subjects you want to describe. Second, identify the similarities and differences and organize them in a Venn diagram. Third, make a topic sentence. Fourth, follow your topic sentence with supporting details grouped together. Fifth, Use the transition or signal words that show similarities and differences. And lastly, sum up everything with a concluding statement. Now here's your task. Select from the given topics and write at least two paragraphs showing comparison and contrast about the one you picked. Use the Venn diagram in organizing your ideas. Write your paragraphs in a one-hole sheet of paper. And here is the rubrics for scoring your work. The given topics are a bicycle and a motorcycle, basketball and football, plastic bag and paper bag, and TikTok and Facebook. Once you're done, you may show your work to your teacher or to any adult supervising your studies. And they may use the scoring rubrics for comparison and contrast paragraph in rating your work. We have reached the end of our lesson and I would like to congratulate you for successfully learning how to write paragraphs showing comparison and contrast. To download the worksheets used in this lesson, simply click the link to my Facebook page, Teacher Cherica, where you can get the download link for today's worksheets. Please do not forget to follow and like my page and feel free to share any of my posts. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, you may show your support by subscribing to Teacher Cherica and please click the bell for easy updates to my new uploads. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And that's it for today. I will see you again on our next virtual class where English is made easy with Teacher Cherica. Goodbye, kids.